Hey everyone! You know, sometimes when you're trying to explain things and people argue with you, they say you must be wrong because of what the dictionary says. They consider the dictionary the final word on the matter. When you're talking about racism, you might explain how racism is systemic and how, as beneficiaries of the system, white people can't be victims of it. That's when they pull out the dictionary and show that racism can be anyone's personal prejudice against anyone of a different race. <laughs> They'll say you're trying to change the definition of racism, because growing up, we learned that racism is when you hate people who look different. What they and the dictionary are doing is trying to separate racism from its origins and its history. Racism and nationalism are modern phenomena with long histories, and if anyone's changing the definition by omission, it's the dictionary. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. When we're talking about racism, we mean white supremacy. Okay? White people created the rigid racial categories that have shaped the past 500 years of history so much, and kept them in place to this day for their own benefit. That history can't simply be ignored when trying to understand racism. A definition that doesn't draw on history is a good example of why dictionary definitions aren't the final answer. Who says the dictionary companies get the last word? Language doesn't really work like that. The people who make the dictionaries do lots of research, of course, but they're still individuals and they're still influenced by cultural and institutional factors. You know, institutional, like who's paying and who's getting paid. They don't want to rock any boats. So saying the dictionary says something isn't the end of the conversation. It's the beginning. More to the point, Dictionaries only ever provide brief explanations of something. They can't cover all the bases. Look at the dictionary definition of terrorism. It'll be different in every dictionary, but that doesn't really matter, because a brief explanation can't really describe everything that people call terrorism. There are innumerable definitions of terrorism written by government agencies, university departments, think tanks, and media corporations. To be able to say definitively what terrorism is, you'd have to take everything that could possibly be called terrorism and compare it with every definition that you accept as the legitimate definition and see which count as terrorism and which don't. It's arbitrary. It's a matter of opinion, not definition. Terrorism is in the eye of the beholder. In fact, there was a conference, an academic conference, on the definition of terrorism that broke up without even having reached one. It's not always necessary, I hope they learned from that, to have a very brief explanation of something. Some things are far too broad and complicated to be encapsulated in just a few sentences. And that's where racism comes in. Racism is a system of institutionalized prejudice and discrimination. The institutions of racism include the plantation and the slave system, but also the police, the courts, the prison and the law, plus the school, the nature of wealth distribution, the job and housing markets, health care, and many more areas of life to one extent or another. When right-wingers say racism isn't systemic, they're usually making their own definitions of systemic. They'll say there are no laws that are explicitly racist anymore, and that's because overt racism has been taboo since the 1960s. So I guess you need to look beyond words on paper for evidence of racism. You could look at who's getting disproportionately arrested and who's getting sentenced to longer, harsher punishments, who's more likely to be killed by police, who's more likely to be poor and why, who's more likely to get turned down for a job or a loan, and who's more likely to get pepper sprayed for blocking a road. 
Does the dictionary mention any of that? And why are things like that, anyway? Does it have anything to do with centuries of history? Or did things just magically fall into place this way recently while I wasn't looking? This narrow definition of racism is useful to the same people when they talk about Muslims. They're fine with stereotyping Muslims, treating them like shit, encouraging violence against them. These prejudices have the same origins as other manifestations of racism, like a racist system telling you to fear foreign brown people with a different religion, giving you all kinds of bullshit reasons to hate them. And they have the same effects as racism. Fear, discrimination, violence, including all the U.S.'s wars over the past 20 years. But it's not racism, they'll say, because Muslims aren't a race. Checkmate! <laughs> so it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, and even came from a duck. But the dictionary says it's not a duck, so I'm off the hook for any shit I talk about Muslims. If only mental gymnastics were a real sport. <laughs> One reason people move to the right is fear. They fear crime and drugs and inner cities and gangs and illegal immigrants. And all these things are presented to them as dark-skinned people. When the media and the people around you tell you about black and brown people with no historical context, no social context, and no sympathy, and you don't question them, you might end up afraid of big groups of people too. But it's not just the right. The point of systemic racism is you're affected by it regardless of what you think. It's woven into the culture. Liberals, leftists, even people of color can be racist. It's better not to think of it as an individual thing and think that, just like all propaganda, racism has affected your thinking from a young age. It's not so much that you are a racist, just that you grew up in a racist culture. And as a product of that culture, if you're not careful, you'll perpetuate it. It takes a lot of work to uproot all of our racist tendencies. Downplaying racism and refusing to educate yourself is not a good way to start. Try examining what you think and considering where those beliefs actually come from. Maybe they're not based on objective fact. Maybe the dictionary has been holding back our understanding of racism this whole time. Can you think of any reasons some people would want us to think racism isn't a big deal? Or it's not systemic? What else have those people taught us? Maybe we have a lot more to learn. <laughs> Thanks.